four in the boardroom and Mrs. Johnson and Dr. Hairston are on the line. Mr. Figures will be joining us momentarily. Um, we have all had an opportunity to review the agenda. Is there a motion to adopt the agenda as presented? So moved. Second. Doc Dr. Luckett has moved. Ms. Hilliard has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. Next on the agenda is the approving of the minutes. Board members, we've had an opportunity to review the minutes in advance. Is there a motion to approve the May 17th and May 27th minutes as presented? I so move. Second. Ms. Hilliard has moved. Dr. Luckett has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion is approved. Now on to the superintendent's report. Dr. Green. Good evening, uh, Dr. Sevag, board members, uh, JPS team members, and all of our community members and scholars and families who are joining us. We'll begin with our highlights from the instructional television team. Congratulations to the 1,397 JPS graduating scholars for receiving $60,876,069 in scholarships. We are proud to announce that our graduation rate for the 2021-2022 school year is 84.6%. That's an increase of 7.4% from last year and 20.6% over the previous five years. Our dropout rate decreased by 27.4% from last year, yielding a dropout rate of 12.7%. This is a decrease of 21.3% from the previous seven years. Way to go, JPS scholars. Third grade Obama Magnet Scholar Tremaine Davis, affectionately known as TJ, is the 2022 Doodle for Google National Art Contest winner for the state of Mississippi. The school held a surprise ceremony on Wednesday, May 25th, to announce TJ as the winner for his Dugu title, Dreaming About My Favorite Things. His family, fellow classmates, and a Google representative were all in attendance to celebrate his artistic achievement. Congratulations, TJ. Registration is underway for returning scholars at all JPS schools. To register, all you have to do is log into your active parent account. You can access Active Parent on the JPS website or by logging into the JPS mobile app. If you have any questions about registration, please call Enrollment Services at 601-960-8852 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The district's official mobile app is now available. Get access to news, the district's directory, and much, much more. Download it on Google Play, and from the Apple App Store. Search for Jackson Public Schools MS. For more information about Jackson Public Schools, please visit our website at www.jackson.k12.ms.us. Follow us on Facebook at Jackson Public Schools, on Twitter at JPS District, and YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash JPS ITV. Thank you uh, to our instructional television team. Um, just appreciate their continued work in providing us with those updates. Uh, board members, as you, as you saw and as you heard in the, the video there on May 31st and June, for June 1st, we hosted commencement ceremonies for over 1,300 of our scholars, um, actually 1,397. Um, and also, as you heard, they had earned over $60 million in scholarships collectively, and that's thus far. And, and I know those dollars are, are still rolling in, those offers and scholarships are still ro rolling in. It was wonderful to celebrate uh, the graduating class of 2022 following two years, uh, well, two and a half years, really, of restrictions and altered ceremonies. and. I know y'all have been right along with us as we've tried to pivot and, and um, manage um, our response to the pandemic. 
This was an incredibly special graduating class for me because I joined Team JPS in 2018 as they began their high school careers. And so I'm proud of the, the strides that we've made amid the pandemic and over the course of the past four years, and I'm excited about our future uh, of JPS. Um, and each day we're moving, is, as uh, you've heard in some of the stats that were shared there in terms of graduation rates, um, the, even the, the scholarship dollars that have been earned, um, and more and more, I think you're hearing over time the progress that we're making on some of the goals that we've set, um, strategic goals and commitments that we've set along the way. So I'm just I'm incredibly proud of the work that's, that's gone into these past four years. And um, I'm just confident that um, more and more we're sending out into the world some young people who are prepared to, to change the world and to make it a, a world that we all want to live in. Um, you know, it's, there's just something about this graduating class that, that uh, as I reflected and as I observed them walking across the stage and um, gave them the, the pound, and you all did as well, um, just really, really reflecting on, uh, for some of them, the road that they've taken. Um, and just knowing that each of them has a story and that each of them has had trials and, and triumphs and, and all of that in their experiences. So just um, as we do each year, want to lift them up. Um, obviously, our hearts are with them as they go out and, and um, take on the challenges of adulthood and leading lives that are not wholly curated by their families and by our schools and all, but we know that they're prepared with what they need to, to um, do some pretty big things. And so we're just proud of them and excited to see where they go and to watch them and root them on from afar. Um, and now, uh, <laughs> whew, uh, we're all breathing a slight, slight <laughs> sigh of relief as we end this school year. I think you all know probably as well as we do that um, as we conclude the 21-22 school year, we're launching into what well, we've already launched into plans for the 22-23 school year. And every JPS team member has a role in preparing us for the next school year and planning um, doesn't even begin in the summer. It actually begins back in the spring. And creating thoughtful and detailed plans is, is critical to our success in the new school year. And so in the spring, we launch what we call, and some of you may know this, our opening with excellent, excellence, opening with excellence, planning and preparations for the new school year. And it's in this effort that we uh, look closely at our budgeting, our instructional programming, uh, partnerships, uh, enrollment, of course, student enrollment in our schools and in, dis in our district, our hiring um, and, and staffing needs, our facilities and continued um, uh, work around facilities and, and transportation and all those things just to determine what's working and should be continued and those things that are growth areas for us and, and um, where there's continued improvement needed. And as I said, we, we start that in earnest in the spring and carry it through the summer. In 2023, 22-23, um, the school year marks our, our four year uh, or fourth year uh, into our strategic plan already. Our fourth year into the strategic plan, excellence for all. And as we move into the new school year, we'll continue to evaluate what's, what seems to be working and what's propelling us towards the goals and the um, commitments that we've set out and set forth in the strategic plan. We're looking more closely at those key initiatives that we've listed under each of the five um, strategic commitments. Uh, even over the last day and a half, the senior team and I have been taking a step back to just take stock in where we seem to be on track with delivering on those commitments and those key initiatives under each commitment and just de determining where we might need to double down and, and um, ensure that we don't lose opportunities to advance that work. We're already starting to emphasize and elevate areas of focus, um, such as social and emotional learning and our responses to some of the more current and, and um, imminent needs of, 
of our scholars um, and responding to our current context. And so as we typically do over the summer, um, you can expect that uh, later in the summer we'll be coming, or across the summer, we'll be coming to you with more details about plans and some of the partnerships, of course, as we bring some of the contracts to you um, to solidify the work that we'll, we've got and that we're planning and continuing into the school year, just to, breathe, to continue to build upon some of those previous successes and to ensure, as I said, that we're more responsive to um, some of the needs that we've both observed and ones that we're hearing from our scholars and families. So um, more on that as we continue through the summer, but just wanted to kind of tee that up for us. With that, I'm going to conclude my remarks for this evening, um, Dr. Sivak, and see if there are any questions or um, any reactions from anyone. Thank you, Dr. Gr Thank you, Dr. Green. Board members, any comments or questions? I, I just want to take a moment to commend you and the team for really an incredible um, closing two weeks of the school year. Um, I was I had the privilege to attend the um, ACT Top Thirty, mm -hmm. Top Ten ceremony for the schools and. Um, it was really uplifting. Um, I, mean, I just want to share that publicly. I think I shared it. Was, it was one of the most inspiring nights that I've had in JPS. We've been parents for 14 years. So I know that it doesn't happen by accident. I know there was a ton of planning that went into it, the, the team effort. Um, and so, um, again, I wanted to share that. And then graduations were just so inspiring. Um, I got to be there with Ms. Thompson at Forest Hill. I know all of us were there throughout the week and um i agree with you it just there was something special about the shot and, and so um again those were very uplifting ceremonies that, that a ton of time and thought and effort goes into it and so just a shout out and appreciation to the team um thank you dr Sivak, on behalf of the team thank you for that and, and just as we were there um for emotional support for mrs thompson <laughs> on and this year and as we have been in the past for mrs thompson as we have been in the past for Ms. johnson um we will be there for you next year <laughs> dr Sivak, <laughs> as you have your oldest and well and and for you yes ma'am yes ma'am and for you uh we, we will be there we will be there for you <laughs> <laughs> Kleenex and all. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks again. And um, with that, we'll go ahead and, and continue with the meeting. And um, uh, I missed, uh, Attorney Turner just informed me that we do not have any public participation. Oh, we do have one. Okay. So we do have one uh, community member who will be um, adding public comments. Uh, community members who would like to make public comments should email their request to Roz Williams at roswilliams at jackson.k12.ms.us no later than 5 15 p.m. or log into the zoom meeting between 5 and 15 5 and 5 15 p.m. to indicate their desire to comment uh, so before I get started I just want to set expectations for speaking um, you will, of course have three minutes for comments attorney Turner generally keeps minutes however during our teleconference meeting the moderator will keep time uh, the board believes the public's comment is very important and the board will listen and consider comments but we will not respond at this time if there is an issue that you have not taken up with leadership at a particular school or the district administration we encourage you to do so uh, and board members can be reached at our email addresses which are on the JPS website uh, so with that, um, I'll turn this over to um, Attorney Turner to move on with our public comment session. Board members, we have one person who signed up to address you for public participation. I'm going to apologize if I mispronounce the name. Anik Kirkjean wants to address you regarding Bing Path Summer Camp. Hello, members of the board. Hello, members of the board. Apologies for that. Um, I know uh, I recognize some of you. Some of you have met me. Some of you know of my work and the work that uh, I've been doing with um, the Bean Pass. Uh, I'm here today uh, to really to thank you and just to fill in a few gaps for everyone on what the hell we're up to. 
um, <laughs> which has been a lot. So um, thank you for getting us to this stage. It's been a four, actually five year, uh, pr um, it's been five years getting to where we are. So I represent Beanpath. Um, I am the Makerspace Director and the STEAM Program Director. We are the STEAM Incubator Hub for JPS this summer. We are both a third party supporter of JPS summer programs, so many of them are coming to us for STEAM programs, as well as having our own STEAM immersion program, where students work with STEAM educators and professional experts in tech, architecture, fashion, AI, robotics, and many more. I can go on. The students also work with an entrepreneur consultant to look at how they can take their ideas that, that come to mind while they're in our makerspace and doing these programs, take their ideas and um, from the program into a business model as well as understanding how to build their portfolios. The makerspace is, um, is where this all happens. It is a 6,500 square foot uh, building that is full of 3D printers, a wood shop, a laser cutter, uh, a textile shop, um, robotics, electronics bench, digital bench, and so forth. It is the first building to open in the tech district, a 13-acre development project led by our founder, Dr. Nashley Cephas, who I believe quite a lot of you have met or at least are aware of. She's my boss, and she's incredible. <laughs> so I'm privileged to stand here today as a representative. All programs this summer have been created by our JPS committee, uh, sorry, student committee, and our JPS teacher committee, who, thank you, Mr. Sherwin Johnson, has helped pull these people together. It is now, uh, it is, it will be a pilot for uh, as to how we will continue to serve, thank you very much, how we will continue to serve JPS through the rest of this year, i.e. with after school clubs, field trips and so forth. I want to thank you for all your support over the last five years of getting us here and look forward to showing any of you around at some point, just give us a shout, and being able to be part of your mission, excellence for all. Thank you, and we welcome you to the Makerspace at Beam Pass. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kirk John. Okay, board members. Um, now, we did not amend the agenda, but I do see that the review of discipline cases is on the agenda next. Um, usually, we would move these to the end of the meeting. Is that, is that the plan? Okay. So, we'll just, is a turn, turn, do we need to amend the agenda, or can we just agree to that we'll move these to the end? I can just agree to move them. Okay, are we good with that? Okay, great. Okay, next we have our information only items and we will have our bond update. Um, and Ms. Robinson will present the information this evening. And I also see Ms. Franklin as well. Thanks. <laughs> good evening, Dr. Seaback, board members, Dr. Green. At the first board meeting of each month, we have the pleasure of providing the bond update. In tonight's update, we'll review um, the construction updates, the projected board action dates on remaining projects, the bond financial report, and an update on the Hughes Field project. Ms. Franklin will start us off with the construction updates. Ms. Franklin. Good evening, board members. Tonight we'll start at one of our phase two elementary schools. At Sykes Elementary School, this is the first set of boys and girls restrooms that are wrapping up. We, um, we've already installed the ceramic tile, epoxy floors, and the contractor is moving forward with uh, finishing the painting and installing the uh, solid plastic partitions. At Bailey Middle School, uh, two science labs have been completed there. These are photos showing the before of those science labs, um, and we remo we've removed the trough that you see in the photo on the left, um, and gotten all new student workstations. The floors have been refinished. It's been updated with LED lighting. Some, there was some plaster repair and painting also in both of these classrooms, 
and it also received uh, new doors and hardware. At Cardoza Middle School, uh, we've seen these photos before uh, when we tore out all of the concrete at the back of the school uh, near the gymnasium. Um, since then, the contractor has regraded this area and sloped it correctly, and all of that concrete has been re-poured. At Chastain Middle School, we are in progress on our second set of girls' and boys' restrooms. Both these have been completely gutted out and contractors are moving forward with updating the plumbing inside of the walls, as well as all of the electrical work. At Kirksey Middle School, we also have a drainage uh, project in progress there. The photo on the left we see um, where some piping uh, connected to these storm drains was replaced, and we got some new um, drainage material there. Um, since then, that area has been covered and resodded. On the campus of Forest Hill High School, the JRLTC building there is receiving a complete renovation. Uh, the photo on the left, we see um, all of the ductwork has been installed. Um, contractors have installed the studs and sheetrock for the new four offices that will accommodate our uh, RLTC staff. At Lanier High School, uh, one of our libraries has come to a completion. Uh, it's received all new updated flooring new LED lighting, new ceilings, a new circulation desk, um, a new aluminum and glass entryway. Also at Murrah High School, that library has come to completion. It's also received all new uh, vinyl flooring, new LED lighting and ceilings, a new circulation desk, new solid surface counters for the computer workstations, and the photo on the right will see um, the work uh, area has gotten all new millwork and solid surface countertops. Um, next, Ms. Robinson is gonna give us an update on our board action timeline. And just, just to back up on the library renovations, we know it's taken a while for us to complete those library renovations. I'm excited to say the first um, school, Callaway, will start receiving their furniture the third week of this month. So we will start seeing furniture installed and all the um, library libraries back online before stu school students arrive in, in August. Um, we have two major projects remaining um, to go to the board for action, um, the baseball and softball fields and the new field renovations, which is a rebid. The baseball softball fields bids will open on June the 16th. Um, we will um, be meeting with um, the COO, Mr. Albright, and Dr. Green after those bids are open. And if everything is in order, we would ask a special permission to be on any special uh, board meetings that we may have. Often there is a late June board meeting for um, approving the budget. We wanted to go ahead and um, because uh, the next board meeting wouldn't be until July to go ahead and accelerate um, the, the, the approval and award and um, contracts for the, the baseball and softball fields. Um, Newell Field, that will be, um, bids will open June 28th, and we will be reviewing those, but we will wait until July to come to the board for action for our Newell Field renovations. Each, um, each uh, meeting, we have the pleasure to provide an update on the financials. The orange gives the amount expended. To date, we have expended 71.8% of the bond funds, which is up from 69%. Well, that is as of May 27, 2022. We've expended 71.8% of the bond funds. Uh, we still have um, about 8.9% that's un unencumbered with $11.12 million encumbered. The next three slides give a school by school um, budget in in expenditures, encumbered amounts, and budget balances. And I won't read through these three slides. We do want to end the um, presentation with a little sad um, um, information. Um, we have been having some recent vandalism at Hughes Field. Um, the contractor has had some ongoing problems with um, theft from air conditioning to small tools. But last week, someone did break, break in, and they had a concrete cinder block, and they um, threw it at the new roll doors that were on the concession stand and also at a window. What we're doing, we're working with um, our campus enforcement office. Um, they will be doing some additional patrols. 
They are in, working in partnership with JPD and other local law enforcement. And we have uh, also been in touch with our city councilman, Vernon Hartley, and he is working to um, through the um, Neighborhoods Association, so we really can make a community effort. We're making a $6 million investment in the Hughes Field, along with over a million dollars projected for baseball, softball in that area. So we want to make sure that the community, we, we know we're, we're bringing that um, area back to life and making sure we have all eyes on that site so we don't have that continued vandalism. So, um, like again, we're making a more focused effort with our both internal patrolling and also with um, joint efforts for local um, police agencies. And that concludes our update. Any questions? Thank you, Ms. Robinson, Ms. Franklin. Board members, any questions, comments? I, I had a question. I wanted to. Dean Harrison, I'd just like to uh, comment on the. Um, Dr. Harrison, hold on one second. She can go. I, I oh, no, no. Well, yeah, I, I was. I wanted to make sure that we could all hear. <laughs> Dr. Harrison. Dr. Harrison, go ahead and speak. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, uh, Ms. Thompson. I was just um, going back to um, want to get an understanding. You, did, did I hear you say that the, all of the libraries will be up and running before the fall, before the kids go back to school at all of the high schools? Yes, yes ma'am. And furnished and have everything in them? Furnished and ready, yes. Okay. Thanks, Ms. Thompson. Dr. Sivak, if it's, if it's okay, um, you want to speak to Ms. Robinson, um, speak to our plans around summer projects in general vis-a-vis um, -vis the start of school? Uh, yes, sir. So we are um, focusing on uh, completion of several um, projects this summer, and we have given uh, contractors a firm deadline that um, everything will be completed by June, tw July 22nd. So we are also doing our uh, summer cleaning as well. And so with the return of um, all students and staff, we're pre preparing for students and staff to return for August 1. So we are having a very focused effort. We're um, completing those restroom renovations. Um, so we don't have that disturbance that we did this year with, you know, um, construction going on while students are there. And that's in every school, even the elementaries, like Oak Forest? Yes, they're doing some, um, the, the final um, punchless items of some tile repair at Oak Forest, but yes. You said July 22nd? We've given them a July 22nd deadline, and that gives us a, an, an additional week to do any type of punch list um, items. But most um, actually will be through this, um, several will be through completed uh, this uh, June, but we do have some that are uh, finishing up in July. Okay. I have a question. Um, yeah, you mentioned the um, vandalism, and I was wondering, you know, if the uh, money to repair and whatever there in regards to the vandalism, uh, does it come out of insurance or um, is it coming out of the... So it, it is the, the contractor's responsibility right now. It hasn't been turned over to um, the district as far as um, completion. So mm -hmm. the contractor is absorbing that cost right now. They did want to alert us to say that this, you know, mm -hmm. of course they can't make money if someone is always breaking in. But right now right. they haven't tried to pass on the cost to, to the district. So they are absorbing that cost. Mm -hmm. They are insured themselves. Right? Yes, they are self-insured. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Harrison. Thank you. I just wanted to um, add my appreciation for the work being done, particularly 
uh, and the intention being 2018, uh, the Hughes Field effort, because that is in Ward 5, and I will work diligently to do whatever we can to give you all the community support, to all the ideas, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Harrison. All right, thank you for the update. Thank you. We look forward to closing it out soon with board approvals. Well, understanding there may be some change orders and things. Thanks again. Yeah. Um, all right, next we have the review of school improvement benchmark results for comprehensive support and improvement, and Dr. McDonald will provide this update. Good evening. Good evening. Dr. Seaback. Board members, Dr. Green, and the JPS family. On behalf of the Office of School Support, we present to you for information purposes only school improvement updates for schools that are identified as CSI or Comprehensive Support and Improvement. In your reports, you will find overall proficiency goals, benchmark one, benchmark two, and benchmark three assessment proficiency results, student enrollment and attendance data, mm -hmm. teacher attendance data and student disciplinary infraction data for all of our CSI identified schools. Are there any questions about those reports? Thank you, Dr. McDonald. Board members, any questions? Dr. McDonald, I just had one, and it was really, I was wondering if you could speak to the process of establishing the goals. Um, there, there were some in there where you know, it either exceeded or was close, and there were some where there were pretty wide gaps and uh, just wanted to get a sense of the process. Uh, you, and and, and you, when you see those wide gaps, do you revisit how you set the goals and, and things of that nature? Dr. Seaback, I'll defer to the assistant superintendents for that response. Okay, and I was, the, the ones I was really, well, whoever you put up there, is, I will <laughs> trust your judgment. Good evening, Dr. Sivak, Dr. Dr. Green, board members. Um, basically, at the end of the year, our goals um, for the schools are set based on the district's overall strategic plan, each school's overall proficiency level, and trend data. Each principal is provided uh, data, and they identify each student's proficiency level by the subject and the grade level. Principals are charged with setting their goals for each benchmark based on current data to obtain the end of the year goals. So we'll begin at the at at this end of the year, we begin for next school year using these benchmark data points to begin our next school year, looking at that data using our FIT process. Great. Thank you. You're so welcome. <coughs> Board members, any other questions? Great. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. McDonald. Next, we will move on to a review of the agreement between Blackboard and the Jackson Public School District, and Mr. Johnson will provide this update. Greetings, Dr. Green, uh, Board President Dr. Seabock, members of the board, J uh, Attorney Turner, and uh, JPS colleagues, and the JPS community. As information only, I come before you this afternoon with a recommendation to approve the renewal agreement with uh, Blackboard K-12 uh, for the renewal of the JPS website, uh, MAS notifications, uh, automated phone and text messaging system, as well as our mobile app for the 2022-2023 school year. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. We're going to hold one second while we... Um... Hello? Board members, I'm inclined to hold just a second while we get Ms. Johnson and uh, Dr. Harrison back on the line.
Okay, great. Uh, thanks. So we're, so we're back. Mr. Johnson just presented the blackboard information. Board members, and this is information only. Uh, board members, are there any questions, comments? Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Next, we have the request to review uh, the RFP 2021-18 to Glimpse 12 for a software solution for program evaluation. And Dr. Merritt will present this information. Great evening to Dr. Sivak and board members, Dr. Green and JPS community. The administration is recommending the approval of the, to award RFP 2021-18 um, for program evaluation to Glimpse K-12. Uh, as reflected in the executive summary, this is a program that we really do need. As we are spending ESSER dollars, we are required federally to do um, a lot of reporting and determine the um, return on investment of the programs and solutions that we are, uh, are purchasing. And so this program will facilitate and assist us with these reporting efforts. Thank you, Dr. Mayor. Okay. Board members, any questions, comments? Dr. Murray, I just have one question. Um, in uh, preparing to make this recommendation, did you look at other school districts that have used this software? And if so, um, what did you learn from that? Yes, sir. And I talked to a couple of uh, superintendents in Alabama that were using this program, and they found it to be very useful. Matter of fact, um, the State Department in Alabama is, has uh, implemented this statewide to evaluate the uh, impact uh, on ESSER dollars. So to my understanding and from what we reviewed, it's an excellent product to help us achieve and evaluate return on investment. Great, thank you. Thank you. Board members, next we will move on to the approval of the agreement between Parents for Public Schools Jackson, and then after that, we'll also have uh, the request to approve the agreement between the Mississippi Symphony Orchestra and Jackson Public School District. Dr. Smith will present both of these, and so we'll just, oh, it looks like Dr. Cormack is going to stand in, and we'll just do them both uh, since it's the same person. Good evening, uh, members of the board, uh, Dr. Green, Dr. Sivak. Um, I have the pleasure of standing in for Dr. Smith um, to present uh, those two items, the agreement with Parents for Public Schools, uh, which is in support of visual arts, performing arts, and a culminating event programming, um, a long-term um, relationship that we have with Ask for More Arts, um, and uh, under the leadership of Ms. Garner, uh, one of our former uh, JPS uh, administrators. Um, and then our longstanding relationship with the Mississippi, Mississippi Symphony Orchestra, uh, which provides um, both in-person and virtual um, arts programming um, for our scholars, um, inclusive of uh, both in-person and virtual field lessons. And so they made some transitions uh, during COVID, uh, but we're able to continue that partnership, which provides um, some great field experiences and opportunities for strings development um, for our scholars um, in elementary. Great. Thank you, Dr. Cormack. Board members, any questions, comments? Dr. Luckett? No questions. Just want to say I'm glad to see both of these on here for information and I'm sure coming up for action here soon. Always glad to see um, the continued access to the arts for our kids. Mm -hmm. And that strings program historically has been a remarkable one for this school district. And I'm so glad that it's still around and, and vibrant. And we look forward to bringing uh, more opportunities to expand fine arts offerings. Um, we have some conversations in the works, so uh, mm -hmm. to uh, stay tuned. Great. Thank you, Dr. Cormack. Okay, board members. Uh, next, we will have, um, we'll move on to our information action items. And our, the next is the request to approve the rental agreement between the Jackson Convention Center and Jackson Public School District. Uh, Dr. Cormack, are you doing this one as well? Okay, great. <laughs> Good evening once again. Uh, this particular arrangement is uh, with our uh, Jackson Convention Center complex uh, to host uh, or to provide space to host our annual Leadership Institute. This is a three-day conference that we host for our JPS principals um, uh, around our instructional priorities this year of acceleration, balanced assessment, and uh, creating a culture of observation and feedback. Um, our team has been working diligently to put this uh, experience together and will um, serve um, our instructional needs um, moving forward. 
Great. Thank you, Dr. Cormack. Board members, any questions or comments? Okay, hearing none, uh, is there a motion to approve? I so move. Second. Ms. Hayward has moved. Mr. Figures has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. Next, uh, we have the request, the request to approve the Mississippi Employer Assisted Housing Teacher Program. This is a loan agreement. Um, Ms. Lyons will present this information. Great evening, Dr. Green, Board President Sivak, members of the board. The loan agreement before you is between the Mississippi Department of Education in conjunction with Fannie Mae and the teacher listed in board material. A maximum loan amount up to $6,000 is available to an eligible teacher to assist in paying the closing costs of the home and the teacher must agree to render three years of service to the district. Based on this information, the Office of Human Resources is recommending approval of the Mississippi Employer Assisted Housing Teacher Program Loan Agreement for a teacher at Northwest uh, Middle School. Great. Thank you, Ms. Lyons. Board members, any questions? I know there's usually a race to approve or to motion these. <laughs> these are always good news. Uh, is there a motion to approve? So moved. <laughs> Second. Ms. Thompson has moved. Ms. Hilliard has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. The motion carries. Uh, next, uh, we have the request to approve the data sharing agreement between Bright Bites and the Jackson Public School District, and Mrs. Mason will present this information. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, Administration is recommending the approval of an updated data sharing agreement between the Jackson Public Schools and Bright Bites. This is an updated version to reflect the acquisition of the Bright Bites company by Google uh, recently. So this is just a reapproval of that same agreement. Great. Thank you, Ms. Mason. Uh, board members, any questions, comments? If not, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Dr. Luckett has moved. Ms. Heer seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. Next, we have the request to approve uh, an agreement between the Burroughs Bus co Company Transportation Bus Fleet. I believe this is a requ request to purchase buses. Is that, is that correct? That's correct, yes. Okay, Mr. Albright. Good evening, board members, Dr. Sivak, Dr. Green, <clears throat> JPS colleagues and community. Um, and this is as well good news. The administration via the Transportation Department is requesting approval to purchase 30 buses from Burroughs Bus Company. The current fleet of buses is 201. At this time, though, the Depart Transportation Department has 42, slightly over 20 percent, that are not operable. Thus, purchasing 30 buses will assist in replenishing our fleet and provide better service to our scholars and parents. Two quotes were solicited from the vendor based on specifications that are provided by the state. Burroughs is the most reasonable quote, and they are able to get the buses to the district on or before July 1st. All right. The buses have been inspected and fall under state contract. They come with air conditioning and the camera system as required by Mississippi Department of Education. Funding source will be through ESSER funds. Are there any questions? Great, thank you, Mr. Albright. Board members, any questions or comments? Are these buses larger than the ones I, I noticed? The, um, are they larger than the ones that you already have? Uh, no, ma'am. These are the, um, I believe these are the 72 passengers, so the mm -hmm. same size as our larger buses. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know we had that large. <laughs> um, we have 35 pack, uh -huh. 64 pack, and 72 pack. Okay. They weren't that large when I was coming along. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to let that one slide, Ms. Hilliard. <laughs> so, uh, board, board members, any other questions or comments? Ms. Hilliard, would you like to make? more. <laughs> would you like to make the motion? <laughs> I do. All right. Okay. I so move. Second. Ms. Hilliard has moved. Ms. Thompson has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Aye. <laughs> the motion carries. Next is the request to approve the agreement between the Mississippi Department of Environmental Quality and the Jackson Public School District, and this is also a, a request around buses and transportation. Mr. Albright. Good evening again. The administration recommends approval of the agreement between the Mississippi Department of Environmental Quality, MDEQ, and Jackson Public School District to provide grant funds as a rebate for the purchase of one new school bus. The rebate amount based on the district bus that qualifies is $16,185.04. The purpose of this grant from MDEQ is to reduce diesel emissions in Mississippi through the implementation of approved early bus replacements. Reducing diesel emissions is currently one of the most important air quality challenges in Mississippi, given that older diesel engines still in use continue to emit large amounts of nitrous oxides and particulate matter which affect many areas in our state and hinder our ability to comply with the national ambient air quality standards. Most importantly, though, they contribute to public health problems. This program will assist school districts in replacing older buses with newer low emission diesel buses. And this will help the state in maintaining compliance with the NAAQS and result in a better environment for children, schools, and the surrounding community. This grant opportunity was made available through the Mississippi Diesel School Bus Replacement Program. Each year, MDEQ invites school districts to submit applications for the Mississippi Diesel School Bus Replacement Program. The, grants, the grant funds provided by this MOA are provided through the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and the State Clean Diesel Grant Program. This project must be completed including the required disposal actions, which mean that the, um, the bus that's replaced has to be made completely unserviceable um, by September 30th, 2022. Are there any questions? Thank you, Mr. Albright. Board members, any questions? Great. Thank you for the description. So, so effectively, we're getting state grant money to replace a bus that's more energy or uh, more emission efficient. More emission efficient. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, board members, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Dr. Luckett has moved. Mr. Figure says seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 The, the motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Albright. Uh, next, we will move Dr. on. Subek. I'm yes. sorry, before you go on, can, can I do yes, mind if I... point of privilege. Point Absolutely. of privilege, please. Um, so I just want to underscore the thoughtfulness in the last two items. Well, obviously, everything that we're bringing, we think is thoughtful and helpful to the district. Um, specifically, want to call out these last two items um, as our team, uh, Mr. Albright, along with um, uh, Dr. Uh, who are you? Dr. William Merritt and, <laughs> and, and, and other team members in um, really working uh, closely with our with the Mississippi Department of Education and um, in this case with um, environmental quality as well as others with regard to um, these funding opportunities and the smart thoughtful uh, appropriate use of ESER funds mm -hmm. if we had accepted initial messages we might not have gone forward with uh, some of these more thoughtful um, creative uses to address some very real issues you heard the the bus count and the numbers of buses that we've needed to address and so uh, just really appreciate that our team didn't take um, the initial no or probably not but that they continue to work and and dig for greater clarity and we're now positioning ourselves to address a very real issue for many of our families around our buses. So I want to give them public kudos there. And also, um, I believe uh, you board members know, uh, but I believe this is our last, or, or at least this month, almost last, um, we will be um, saying farewell to our friend and colleague, Mr. Albright. <laughs> Who has, who has done so, so much to try to position us, <laughs> to try to position us 
um, as a district and around our facilities and operations. And so just want to, um, before, you know, folks go out on vacation and all that sort of thing, make sure that we acknowledge and thank Mr. Albright for his work um, and bid him um, uh, fond farewell. I appreciate his work. You're here. Yeah. If I could, just a short comment. Um, I'm, I'm leaving for personal reasons, but um, this really has become a family for me. Um, I have put in um, all the expertise and thoughtfulness that I feel I have to make this district at least a little better. Um, I would like to think that um, the team that I leave behind um, is more than capable to carry on the strategies and the vision that we've set from the standpoint of facilities, transportation, child nutrition, technology, um, all those areas. And so I appreciate your support and your push um, through the, the two years. Um, I also appreciate the opportunity that you've given me to work for um, incredible leadership and an awesome school district. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Albright. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Alvaro, and thank you for your service as well and um, for, for all you gave to the district as well. Mm -hmm. I'd to see that. I have a question. Yes, uh, Ms. Thompson. This is a, it's, it's not related, but it, it came to mind. I was uh, thinking about the buses and everything mm -hmm. because it was brought up to me by a community member about, like, maybe, I guess there's some sort, and I haven't viewed it myself, and you might be aware, but there's, like, a, a transportation north some foundational issues or potholes that's, that's causing the buses to have to use a separate interest or some sort. I'm not sure exactly if, you, if you've if been brought to anybody's attention or not, but um, I was going to ask about it. But when you're talking about buses, I, it just came to mind. And it's, and it's not on the city side, it's on our side. It is on our side. There are some pretty significant um, potholes in both the parking lot for our employees and in the driveway that the buses traditionally use. And I'm working with our facility team to see if um, in next year's budget there are funds that we can use to, to resurface those areas. So um, it was sufficient that it was creating some suspension problems with our buses mm -hmm. by going through that route, which is why we made the change. Okay. Thank you. Great, thank you. Okay, board members. Um, next, we will move on to the consent agenda item for finance. Um, we All of the consent agenda items have been reviewed by the board previously, and we've had an opportunity to ask questions of the administrations. Are there any questions? Hearing none, uh, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda for finance? I so move. Second. Ms. Hilliard has moved. Mr. Figures has seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. They are on the phone. I told them to read because somebody was lying. It's making all that noise. Okay. I shall move. Second. Ms. Hilliard has moved. Ms. Figures has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion is approved. Next, we have the consent agenda item for personnel. All of the consent agenda items have been reviewed by the board previously. We've had an opportunity to ask questions of the administration. Are there any further questions? If not, board members, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda items for personnel? So moved. Second. Dr. Luckett has moved. Ms. Hilliard has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion is approved. Um, next, board members, we do uh, have an item for executive session. So is there a motion to close the meeting to consider the executive session? So moved. Second. Dr. Luckett has moved. Ms. Figgins has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 
The motion carries. Uh, thank you, everyone, and have a good evening. Good night, everybody. And majoring in psychology to become an occupational therapist. I plan to attend Hines Community College and major in business administration. Mississippi State University and major in biology pre-med. I'll also be going there to take on my degree in engineering. We have seniors and juniors that have experienced the high school level, but you have freshmen and sophomores that haven't. I would like to tell the incoming freshmen to form relationships with your teachers. Stay on track, stay focused, stay disciplined, and listen to your teachers. So have that mindset of getting out of school to graduate so you can pursue within your future. Manage your time. Don't be a procrastinator. Don't play in class. For my incoming freshmen, I'd like to tell y'all to stay on y'all grades. Your track to graduation starts in ninth grade. If you want to get on stage on graduation, start managing your time now. Oh, I got this much time. I got till forever. I can do whatever I need to do. Take high school serious because it's starting ninth grade. Make sure you get your work done. Make sure you have everything. Make sure you stay prepared for graduation before your senior year. Organization, sports, just get involved with a lot of things here at school because it will help you by your senior year. Start on everything early. Don't wait till the last minute and be on top of your game. When you come into your freshman year, you have to be ready to put in the work, to care about your GPA, to care about your class rank, to care about all of that if you want to have the senior advantages that a lot of seniors have now. If you want to be valedictorian, salutatorian, top 10, top 20, that starts ninth grade. Not rush your experience in high school. Try to do your best because you are building the foundation for your senior year. You have to make sure your GPA is high. You have to make sure your ACT scores are high. You have to make sure that everything is in the right track. Don't worry about what your friends are in. Don't worry about trying to go to their class, trying to skip your class. Come to school, be on time, and do everything you can to be a productive student. Like having your ACT, keeping your scores up making sure your grades are good. Be an athlete, go to college, or even in particular, trying to get scholarships. All of that stuff matter at the end of the day. Band, baseball, anything like that that you have here at Forest Hill, because you never know who you might meet. Them might be some of the best friends that you could have out of the organization, and they can help you stay on track with your grades and stuff. So you have to come in with a mindset to succeed and actually put in the work. Different classes, different challenges, and this is the final destination and a sign of passage saying that you made it. Josh, you see student council, Miss Wallace, she's right here, give a little shout out to her. We all made sure that we all came out on top together. We left no one behind. Able to come together and complete this and raise our graduation rates is really an accomplishment. We are proud of the fact that we're in this class of graduating seniors with the rising graduation rates within the JPS and the seniors. Find that way to walk across the stage and be something with your life. This is the point of the whole video we're doing on today. Graduation rates have gone up in the JPS district and we'd like to thank all teachers, counselors, and everyone that helped us get there. Thank you. Oh, wow. <laughs>